Okay, everyone, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy evening to uh, come and learn about solar. Uh, my name is Rob Pinder. I run a small nonprofit uh, called Next Climate. And uh, there's two other people here I just want to introduce for everyone. One is Sally Robinson, who's over there. Uh, she's the Solarized Program Director for NC Portland. And then uh, David Turing is in the back in the black uh, sweatshirt. He's uh, from, he's an energy specialist from Southern Energy Management. And uh, we'll all be here uh, tonight uh, working to help you uh, learn more about solar. So um, the Solarized Program uh, is uh, kind of co-run by myself and my nonprofit and uh, NC Ward. And we have two wind solars that we're working with, and one of them is Southern Energy Management. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just jump right in. So the first, we're going to ask, I guess, three questions um, tonight. So we're going to answer the three questions. First is, uh, why go solar now? And the second uh, question is, um, how do you go solar? So we'll, I'll talk about the program and about uh, how solar works, especially uh, in North Carolina. And then uh, finally, we'll talk about um, what you can do to help uh, spread solar throughout uh, our area, throughout uh, Pittsburgh and through the tribe. So the first question, why go solar now? I think it really comes down to three reasons. The first is to help bring about a clean, independent energy future. The second is to lock in low-cost electricity. And the third reason is to improve the value of your home. So I'm going to step through each one of these. Um, so probably many of you are familiar. Right now, when we uh, you know, turn on our lights or run our appliances, 94% of that electricity comes from fossil sources or fossil fuel sources. Uh, just 6% of that right now is, is renewable when we buy electricity from the utility. Uh, the first thing that has to happen when we make fossil fuels is uh, what's called mountaintop mining or uh, also or other types of extraction where the tops of mountains are pulled off into the valleys. The second thing we burn those fossil fuels and it makes uh, smog air pollution which is especially bad for people with asthma. Um, the leftover waste from that uh, burning is then uh, stored in coal ash lagoons. Those coal ash lagoons can break and uh, uh, dump pollution into our streams. And then finally, all the greenhouse gases that are put into the atmosphere uh, from burning fossil fuels uh, contribute to global warming, to sea level rise, uh, more frequent superstorms, uh, and uh, threaten places like uh, this is out on the Outer Banks at, uh, at Dunrilla Beach. Uh, so the challenge with fossil fuels is everything we love about North Carolina, our beautiful mountains, our pristine uh, uh, air and water, and our uh, lovely coastline, they're all threatened by uh, our addiction to fossil fuels. But probably many of you already have heard this story before. How many of you have heard this story? Can you raise your hand? Okay, pretty much everyone. So what's new? What are we going to talk about tonight that's new? Uh, the big difference is now you have a choice. It used to be that whatever the utility made, that's what you had to buy. But now you have a choice. Uh, you can elect instead to create your own solar, be your own electricity generator, and, uh, uh, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So a typical home solar power plant will uh, keep 12,000 pounds of greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. It uh, will say avoid burning 6,000 pounds of coal. And uh, it's basically equivalent to planting uh, more than 140 trees. So uh, switching to solar has a tremendous uh, impact, uh, improvement in your environmental footprint. Did you have a question? Typical five kilowatt? Or That's for a six kilowatt. Six, okay. So the second question then is, uh, why go solar now? Um, we want to know, is it financially feasible, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's great to have um, uh, aspirations, and we want to ground those in, in how do we uh, make that a reality. <coughs> uh, so the, the two big forces that are at work here is one is the price of solar itself, the panels, uh, the equipment has dropped off a cliff. Kind of like, just like uh, electronics have become cheaper and cheaper, solar panels too have just, the prices have just come way down. But the flip side of that is electricity keeps getting more and more expensive. So the equipment you need to create your own electricity is getting cheaper, whereas the, uh, the price of electricity keeps going up and up and up. This makes the financial equation for solar become more and more attractive. And then the third reason for why to go solar now is it improves the value of your home. So uh, there's been enough installations in North Carolina now that we have a lot of data for uh, uh, realtor assessors about how how the value of homes have changed when solar has been put on them. And we find that uh, homes sell 20% faster, so uh, your home is on the market for less time, and homes sell for 17% more, so you're able to recoup your investment uh, very well. 
Okay, so that's all the reasons why I think it's great, a great idea to go solar now. Uh, how does it work? Um, so first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our program and how, how the pieces of our program work together. So here's what we did. Uh, myself uh, and Next Climate and Satellite Density Board, we got together and we put out a proposal to local solar installers. And we asked them to provide two things in that proposal. The first thing is a turnkey solution. So that means then the solar installer, we ask them to provide everything from uh, an assessment of your home, a design, installation, interconnection with utility, and take care of all the permitting. So, and even, uh, even have financing options available. So they provide everything from start to finish, uh, one point of contact to make that happen. <clears throat> the second thing we ask for is tiered pricing. So what that means is as more people participate, as more people get solar in the program, the price goes down. Uh, and that's that's really because uh, so uh, what our organization is doing is um, uh, helping get more people interested and, and uh, motivated. When we get a bigger group of people, the solar installers start to enjoy economies of scale. We want to make sure those cost reductions are passed on as price savings to all of you participating in the program. So we got some proposals back. We uh, did extensive vetting. We looked at their licenses, their accreditations. Uh, we contacted references. We asked those references for even further references. And I'm really excited that we're working with two of the triangles, uh, premier, really in the southeast, uh, premier uh, solar installation companies. And the first is Yes Solar Solutions, and the second is uh, Southern Energy Management. And David Chern is here from Southern Energy Management in the back. Um, so what you get when you uh, participate in the program, uh, when you enroll either on the webpage or tonight, uh, is the first thing you get is a free solar assessment. Um, so someone, the first thing that we'll do is uh, evaluate your home and, and try to understand what is your solar potential. We want to make sure that if you're going to invest in solar that you can uh, uh, get a lot of electricity generation for it to recoup your investment. Um, the second is access to group discounts. So uh, as, the, as more people participate, the price goes further down. The third thing is to help the community reach larger price reductions. So as more of us go into this together, uh, everyone enjoys lower uh, prices. And the last part is to reach, help reach our goal for sharing solar donations. With every uh, installation that we do as part of the program, we set aside some funds uh, to help uh, promote solar in uh, other environments, education and low income, uh, um, to help low income families and nonprofits that support low income families, um, to help really make, uh, to broaden access to solar power. Uh, so, uh, and that, and so in participating, you're helping them move forward. It also helps us get matching funds to even uh, get uh, get more success and more uh, people to tax solar. So here's, a, here's how solar works uh, when it comes to your home and uh, your electricity bill. And this is really important uh, uh, because it's the main way that makes solar attractive for many people. And the idea is net metering. Uh, so the, uh, uh, every morning the sun shines on your solar panels and creates electricity. Uh, that gets converted into alternating current with a device called the inverter. And that's what powers your lights, your appliances, uh, um, everything in your home. Now, if you have excess electricity, uh, they're gonna, the utility, when you get your solar installation, is going to swap out your current meter for a net metering meter, a bi-directional meter. And what that means is when you're generating excess, more than you can use in your home, you're uh, putting that out onto the grid, and your meter is keeping track of it, and you're getting credits for it. Now at night, when your solar uh, system is no longer generating and you need electricity, you simply use up those credits from the utility. And then once you use all those up, then you end up buying more electricity from, from the utility. Or buying uh, any, any that uh, your credits don't need, you simply still buy them. So you get all the benefits of staying on the grid, uh, but um, you can maximize your use of your uh, solar power. So that's how uh, net metering works, and it's very attractive. Uh, makes solar very attractive for many people. Okay, so how does the installation process work? Um, after you sign up on the, the website, uh, the first thing that happens is uh, your, your contact information comes to uh, either myself or Sally or one of our volunteers working on the project. We'll take a look at your uh, an aerial imagery of your home and try to figure out is there a, a section of roof or a section of space on your property that would be good for hosting solar panels that you'll get enough solar production. Uh, if you have, um, if you live deep within the forest and there's you know moths growing all over your roof, like you know we'd love to help you get solar, but it's probably not going to work for you. Uh, you need to have a lot of uh, uh, good solar exposure. Um, so 
If you looks like you're a good candidate, we'll pass your contact information along to one of our uh, solar installers. They'll contact you uh, about um, other kinds of considerations, the age of your roof, uh, those kinds of things. And uh, if it looks like you're a good candidate, they'll schedule a, a, a full uh, site assessment. Um, they'll uh, design a system for your home that matches kind of your budget, your electricity needs, and the space that you have available. Uh, if you like that design and you want to do it, you sign a contract with the solar installer. Um, that Once you sign that contract, it kicks off a whole uh, act, slew of activity, permitting, uh, uh, process with the utility for your interconnection. Um, they go through and do all that work and come back to you uh, with, when uh, the installation is ready. This. Uh, let me ask David, how long are you guys running in between kind of signing contract and... Right now it takes about four to six weeks four from six the date weeks. of contract to the date that we get approval from NCUC, the utility, permitting, and that and really at that date we can give them a firm, hey, we're going to be out in two weeks, three weeks, whatever the case may be. Great. So that can be... been on the roofs about two days. Sorry, what's the last part? Time spent on the roof installing everything is about two days. And then only one start to finish. Great. So then uh, they'll do the installation uh, and uh, turn it on, and then you'll be generating your own uh, electricity. Um, so the other part that's really important to understand about how solar works is the tax incentives. Uh, the federal income tax credit, this is called the investment, uh, solar investment tax credit, is, uh, covers 30% of your installation costs. So this is a really a really nice uh, perk. An unused portion of that can be carried on to a forward year. So if you can't, uh, if you look at 30% of your installation costs, it's more than uh, you can absorb uh, in a tax credit for one year, you can carry it on to a future year. Okay, so let's break all that down. Yep. Are you gonna, oh, you're gonna get into more details than what you just said? Uh, no, not really. Okay, well, so you can carry it forward for five years? Uh, you can definitely carry it forward for one year. Yeah, David, what did, David says 10 years. Yeah, the federal, the federal, yeah. 10 years you have to get it. You can, you can, you can you use can, it in the first year. Use, so use it just to put it in dollars, say, say, uh, I don't know, say 30% is $5,000, right? right. Um, I don't owe the federal government $5,000 in one year, I owe them one thousand just saying it'll take five years. Can I claim the whole all of my burden or just half of it? All of your burden. All of it? Yeah. Has that changed? No, the state credit federal. used to be half. Oh, okay. the state, state was half. Okay. okay. So federal you can absorb hundred percent of your tax liability in a given year. Per okay. Alright. And you have up to ten years to no. That's sweet. So I, I you know, I'm not like a mole or anything. Um, I've been doing. I've been installing solar in the area for like 18 years, um, and I teach a lot. And I literally just wanted to see. I wanted to hear from you know you guys were right there in the front lines because I'm not doing residential anymore. I teach people how to do it, but some of the policy stuff and money stuff, I don't have my finger on the pulse anymore. And so most of the work I do now is like utility scale, O and M, things like that. And so I wanted to kind of see what where it is now. So I have a lot of info and some of it's antiquated, clearly. So that was why. You know, okay, yeah, thanks. Okay. thanks. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we can learn from each other. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more detail what the financial benefits are. So try to break down kind of a scenario um, to help clarify things. So uh, this is a scenario that's a six kilowatt system. That's um, of right in the middle of the road of, of what we normally see people install. Your system might need to be a little bit larger depending on uh, your electricity needs. It might need to be a little bit smaller depending on uh, what how much roof space you have available. But think of this as just kind of a scenario that helps us kind of walk through what the calculations are like. Um, so the average retail price of a six kilowatt system, if you kind of look through the, uh, the utility commission filings of what people have paid in the last year, uh, average retail price of a six kilowatt system would be around twenty-two, twenty-three thousand uh, dollars. Participating in our solarized program gets you a better price than that. This again is the, the kind of the power of people coming together and getting group discounts. Uh, your federal tax credit is thirty percent, 
So that's uh, about $6,000, and that nets you out at quite a, if you compare kind of what the average retail price is with what you actually end up spending, it's uh, quite a bit less. Um, so let's look at the flip side then. What's the electricity worth that that six kilowatt system would, set, would generate? And the calculation we do here is uh, kind of step through, this is the size of your system, this is how many kilowatt hours it's going to generate per year. So that's what you, when you look at your electricity bill, it says how many kilowatt hours did you buy? Uh, this is how many you're going to be generating. This is the price that you paid the utility right now, but now this is the price that you'll be getting credited for. And that ends up being about $875 in the first year. But of course, keep in mind, next year, when the utility raises the rate, uh, your savings are going to go up. I have a question. Yeah. I know this is all for by example, and uh -huh. that's fine. But the kilowatt hours that are produced is that maximum for a six kilowatt system? No shade, you know, average for North Carolina for this area. I, I guess yeah, my question is, I think it would it, it would be uh, yeah. This number is not like the best best ever, but it's it's a pretty good system without shade. Uh, with pretty good orientation. And pretty okay. Good okay. That's, it. That's, it. That's what I. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No shade. It's a realistic number. It's, it's a like real, you yeah. have a decent site. You get a decent amount of sunlight. Say that. Yeah. 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 But definitely this. Yeah. Your your site assessment will will help you figure out what the yeah. number is. Yeah. Yeah. There's another question in the back. Yeah. You're talking about the buyback price if you sell it back to Duke Energy or whatever. Will that ever change? Because I thought I read somewhere where even though they're selling it at let's say. Five dollars. You know, when you go back and sell it to them, they might say, "Oh, it's only worth three dollars." Is that yeah. made it this way? So or is that out in California or somewhere else? Yeah, other states have been have had other experiences with there are other changes recently with net metering. Uh, the everywhere except Nevada. Nevada is a very special case. But everywhere is grandfathered everyone in. So even if they change the rate, if you were bought it under certain assumptions, you get to stay under that. Set of assumptions. Um, so it's true that they may change it, but I think it's very likely that you would stay with the policy kind of thing. If it changes, uh, and, and I think it, you know it's possible, you do have options, right? Like, uh, going forward in the future, batteries are becoming less expensive. You could buy batteries, and then you wouldn't have to ever send any electricity to the grid. Um, so I think that. Yes, that's some states that has happened. Uh, North Carolina hasn't happened so far, um, but I think that that's something you should think about when you're considering. Yeah, how how long is the contract with the interconnection contract? The interconnection contract is, is renewed annually. Annually, and so that's the contract that sets the price that you're talking about, right? So I was just going to add one other thing, which yeah. is if they do want to change it, they have to go through the utilities commission to to get that change. Um, so there would be to make his three dollars two fifty, they have to go through the utility yeah, right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so there would be hopefully there would be public hearings. The <coughs> NC Warren. Yeah. One of the main things we do is watchdog yeah. Duke Energy. That's so right. we would be definitely at the Utilities Commission fighting them. Which is not to say they they couldn't get it. Sure. They've been very successful getting their yeah. all their, their desires met from the Utilities Commission. But we would definitely have an opportunity to fight against. And the other thing I wanted to add was, because um, I know the installers make this point often, is your system is going to be sized for your usage. So most of your savings is going to come from the sun shining, you're running an appliance, and that appliance is running off of solar. So most of your savings are the power you actually use in your house. But that doesn't even go out through the meter, so Duke has no control over that. So the, the only thing that the, that change would change is credit you for what you're sending out the grid. And as that stands now, he pays eleven cents a kilowatt hour or ten, whatever, and then he's selling it to them for what? Ten. ten. Oh it is dollar, it's dollar, 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 dollar hour for hour. It's equal net metering. Oh, yep. That's huge. That's pretty huge. But with okay. Yeah. So Who is it for the other? It depends on the utility yeah. and they there's a wide variety. Well, for people in Montour, are you with Duke or New Progress or are you Central? Central. Uh, uh, I haven't I haven't installed in Central's area in about a year and a half. I normally work in 
Wake County and Guilford County. Um, the last system I did though in Central Media was uh, they were buying at six cents and they were selling at 10. So it is a different structure in Central that could change. Um, it does affect the size system that you might install. You might say, well, instead of, I, I might want to make sure that I'm using every bit of energy that I'm generating. Um, another step that we encourage folks to take, it's your option to do it or not, but there's a monitoring package that's available through this, it's referred to as an e-gauge, and it will show you not only the production of the system on an hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month situation, but it also shows you your consumption at the same time and it will help you manage your house so that you're maximizing the benefit of your solar system, whether it's net metering to do or using all your energy in your house. That make sense? Is that clear? You mean like you, you wouldn't run your dishwasher at a certain time of day or something like that? Is right, that or you system? might run it during the day when and you're you generating know, electricity or you your laundry during the day when you're running your electric when you're generating your trying to use up all the electricity that you're generating as opposed to pushing excess back. But if you're a Duke, it's the same, so it doesn't matter. Duke, it doesn't matter. You're using that as, as a storage facility if you have excess energy. Is it common to put a lot of batteries in It's pretty rare right now. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm barely heard. The question was, is it common for people to buy batteries? Um, it's, it's fairly rare. We, we install it about 10 of the time, usually someone in a very rural location that loses power when they lose it, they're off for days, or it's someone with a medical condition that has to have equipment that has to run. But batteries right now are expensive. Hopefully that'll change. So we're no, it's okay. Yeah, one more question. Yeah, um, something you said talking about you know, trying to match up what you use with the panels you put in. Um, I don't know. Not know much about it. I would think that I would want to install more panels on my house so that I'd be able to sell more back to the electric. They're panel. never going to write you a check. It's expensive. Duke, Duke's not in the business of making you money. They're in the business of making themselves money. They'll help. You can offset as much energy as you possibly can, but there will be a point in some houses, not in all, but in a house that uses very little electricity, but might have a big roof, I don't necessarily fill up their whole roof with solar panels because. They may be generating so much electricity that is far beyond what they're using, and they that excess, that far beyond excess, they're just giving to Duke and not getting any reward for. In most instances, people don't really want to give power to Duke. Because the one thing we didn't mention was once a year at the end of May, they zero out on your credits. You can't carry credits forward from month to month. They did that for several months last fall, and it was delicious. But. <laughs> But at the end of May, they're going to zero you out if you have some built up. So that's why they don't oversize the system because otherwise you can go with a whole bunch of credits and at the end of May you lose it. So they don't pay? No, you're not that's a solar farm. You're not a solar farm. You're offsetting, you're trying to offset costs that you would normally have to do. And it's flat rate cost of energy. It won't have any inflation attached to it where it do get you're at the mercy of what they are allowed to do. There is a different arrangement called buy all, sell all, where you sell all your power to do, but the rate that you sell it for is lower than what you're buying. So that's not as Okay. Uh, three questions. I mean, we'll just uh, step through just a little bit more about the um, cost and benefits. Uh, the next really big important benefit is the, how much it, the value it adds to your home. Uh, this uh, size system, six kilowatt system, typically will increase the value of your home about $12,000. Uh, that's the way to think about this is you have an asset now on your roof that generates a stream of payments. It's very easy for an assessor, for a real estate assessor to figure out, well, this is the value of that stream of payments and add that to the value. So when we add all these, uh, the tax credits up, the electricity savings, the home value increase for this uh, kind of average system, we're looking at something about $40,000 uh, um, increase in income. Your installation cost is about $20,000. Uh, 
So this is uh, a sizable increase, I guess, over this 20 year period. Now many of you are probably thinking, well, what if I'm not in my home for 20 years? Most people sell their home between five and seven years. Well, the return on your investment really depends on when you sell your home, if you decide to sell your home. Uh, obviously, if you sell it before you get any tax credits back, that's not like as good of a deal if you wait a couple years and get, get uh, some income from uh, the electricity sales. So, but basically, it, it, it turns positive very, very quickly. Um, uh, by year three and four, you're up to uh, kind of the return on investment you might get from a CD, and then uh, for the remainder of the time, it's uh, it's quite good. So I wouldn't say that solar is something that you're going to get rich on. It's not it's not it's not a that kind of uh, investment scheme. But I would say it's within reach for many people. That is, uh, it's uh, compared to the other things you might invest in, it's pretty attractive. I'm sorry, I don't understand exactly. How long would it pay, take to pay for it? So back for it? If you don't sell your home? Oh, if you sell. Yeah, if you sell your home, you get positive uh, value by the way. The third year. Yeah. So it kind of pays for itself in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, if you if you are basically that's as if it's about two or three years. That's as if you're liquidating yeah. the increase in value. I guess. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that kind of breaks down the the finances. Um, the next part is really uh, to make this work. In order for us to kind of all get lower prices, we need everyone to be able to work together. And uh, um, here's how that works in terms of uh, the first the first benefit of that is really there's more savings for you. So I mentioned in the beginning that we have this tiered discount system. There's a there's a hand out there that kind of goes through all the different prices and different uh, how it would work out. But again, for our kind of six kilowatt example, if we get to uh, 100 to 200 kilowatts, so this is roughly uh, uh, 20 or so homes. Um, everyone saves an additional $360, or in our six kilowatt example, people would save an additional $360. Uh, if we get much larger than that, so 200 kilowatts across the whole program, uh, this example you'd save another $600. So again, as more people join, as more people participate, the price goes down and you realize more savings. The other thing is that, or the other, the other aspect of the program is for every sale, that every installation that happens, we put aside a soft, small amount of funds toward our uh, different share in solar initiatives. And uh, so my nonprofit Next Climate, we did uh, two of these learning installations that uh, this is an elementary school or a middle school in Carborough um, where we uh, built a solar installation to help the next generation uh, of young students learn and, uh, about renewable energy. Um, uh, NC Warren has a great program called uh, uh, Sharing Solar where they've installed uh, solar panels on uh, homeless shelters, uh, other nonprofits that serve the low income community, really trying to broaden the access to renewable energy. As, as far as we can. So basically, the, the bottom line is when you participate in the Solarize program, uh, not only are you kind of getting more uh, uh, lower prices for your community, but you're also helping other uh, groups uh, expand access to, to renewable energy. So here's what happens uh, next. Uh, we'd love for you to help us uh, spread the word in your community. If you have a, a email list for your neighborhood or friends, um, uh, it would be great for, for you to help uh, let them know about what kind of opportunities are available by participating in SolarWise. Uh, we have a lot of events coming up. Uh, if you'd like to be a volunteer, um, talk to myself or Sally afterwards. And uh, finally, we have a really great program with faith-based communities, uh, churches and synagogues, to become solar partners where we work together to fundraise uh, around solar projects. So if uh, that's something that's interesting to you, um, again, talk to Sally or I afterwards. Um, I just want to tell you about two really important dates. The first one is uh, the last day to enroll for an assessment. That's April 30th. So if uh, you're interested in uh, or you have friends or neighbors who would be interested, April 30th is the day they have to enroll. Uh, so when you sign up, again, enroll for an assessment, then you get your uh, uh, design and a contract. So the last day to sign the contract and uh, participate in these discounts is June 15th. So. Uh, uh, you have some time to make this decision, but uh, there is a fixed uh, point of difference in Paris. Um, so now I'd like to open it up for, uh, we're going to do a little bit of questions, and then uh, after questions, if you'd like to sign up, we have computers in the back. We can also, uh, so you can enroll for an assessment. Uh, David and Sally or myself also can help you just look at your rooftop 
and uh, see if it's a good fit for solar tonight. Uh, that might save you some time later. So let me first open it up for questions. Yep, sir. In the as long as the program's been in, have we reached tier three all the years, or is that a struggle, or for the highest discount? Sally's the best person. I just want to brag on Solarize Chatham. The best Solarize program in the state so far has been Solarize Chatham two years ago. We had five tiers and we got all the way to tier five. We had 64 installations. And that's an unbroken record so far, so you can try to break it this year. But, uh, so what was the increased discount for that? I can't remember how we were negotiating prices anew every year, so I can't remember what it was then. Um, I could, if you want to know, I could uh, um, I think they've averaged about the middle tier, right? The R's anyway have averaged um, coming out about whatever the middle tier is. So yes. We'll see what happens. Later. Thank you. So I would say that, yeah, that happens on average, but the reason some kind of went to superstar level is for people really being engaged and helping and, and moving things forward. And David you. has a um, comment. One other thing is that in the past, these programs um, the pool of people that were eligible for the program was smaller than it is now. They did the Solarize Carver, they did the Solarize Chapel Hill, then they did a Solarize Orange, then a Chatham Durham, and now it's Solarize Triangle. So that's four counties, right? So I can't guarantee you anything, but I, it's been successful every time that I've been, we've been involved with it. Um, the first we expect it, we're expecting it to be the same way. We don't see any reason why there's been lots of interest already. So, um, yeah, I think we have 150 people signed up for assessment so far. So, so when you talk about the group discount, um, is it 150 people in the triangle? Yes. So, like, if I live in Sanford, I don't have to get 20 people from my neighborhood to do it to be in the group. That's right. To be counted with everybody. <coughs> Right. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Crop. It's private. Anticipated maintenance costs. I mean, I assume that sooner or something's going to have to be replaced, and they would expect a life expectancy. Yeah. What type of buying? The solar panels getting uh, faded or scratched out, or whatever, because of uh, just the environment, it has to be replaced. How yeah. often does that happen? Do you want to take a stab at this question? Do you want to come up Never. and yeah. help answer questions? Oh, they don't you. really. I mean, there's not really any maintenance costs. The only thing we consider a maintenance item is the inverter, and that's because the inverter's expected life is shorter than the panels. What's the expected life? 15, 18 years, something like that. How much for the inverter? Uh, <clears throat> the size, but I would think he'd probably 900 to 1200 bucks, right, for a oh, residential. No. What, 15 years is for the panel? The inverter. Yeah. Okay. So the panel's 30, 35 plus years. Yeah. 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 As long as you don't have any type of natural event, like a, bunch of <coughs> a sandstorm, would really scratch on Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you had damage due to a weather event, you know, a tree fell on your house, I think you know, you had your state and get ripped up. Sorry. Yeah. So that's what's going to harm them is flying debris, you know, and that right. would just be wrapped in your homeowner's insurance. Right. So right. They've seen it now already, so you just let them know. But you it, have it's it. designed to be a roof deck. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not tissue paper. It's, it's I mean, I'll show you pictures of 225 pound guy with construction boots walking across the top of it when it's finished. So it's not. It's not. I, I watched a, a YouTube video yesterday where they actually drove a car, car across. Um, I'm not going to test that. <laughs> 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 they're, so well. they're tough as they're tough as all get out. We're really good at making them. They last forever. Okay. Don't stand on them. Yeah, That's I just showmanship. I'm just saying. Right, right, right. You're, don't do I, that. I understand. Right. Understood. But they're tough as nails. Yeah. Uh, and this program is a 280 watt panel. There are higher wattage panels. What are they? Their so cost. They cost. I mean, you could get a sub power panel and be so as well. Yeah, it would be 300 yeah. to 500 watts. Yeah. What the cost would be about 75% of the power you charge the power. Yeah, there ain't better ways to store than batteries. Anybody come out there and bring better than batteries to store? Can I take that? And if you're in the Duke area, really, 
if you're in a true net metering situation, unless you're losing power a lot, it eliminates the need for batteries. Because if you're selling it to the utility for the same value that they're charging you energy, you just push it out to the grid, the excess energy out of the grid, and buy it later on, and it's cost you more. Right? Yeah. Ten yeah. cent out the door, ten cent back in the door. Yeah, I'm over in Randolph, and they, they break you off. That's <laughs> a different situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, they really cut you sell that. Yeah. Um, so, you would definitely be wanting to look at how much energy you're using your, in your house and when you're using it in Randolph County. Um, it's your, well, I'm in Chatham County, but Ran, uh, Randolph, Randolph Electric. Right, right. That. Yeah. Far They're doing file sell all. Oh, there's a chance you can be behind the meter, which means you want to use every bit of energy right. that you're generating. Yeah, they get like three cents. Uh, right, right. And North Carolina Repower really is paying for that a lot of energy. So, um, yeah, there's a way to figure it out, but you would be an instance where you might buy a smaller system than the guy in the Duke here because you're going to try to use every bit of energy as it's generated. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I know how much I use. I mean, I, I got a farmer out there, um, he had refrigeration equipment in his barn, and I put a meter on there to determine exactly how much energy he was using during the day, and I built a system to produce that. So nothing flowed out the door. So there's ways, different ways to see. Any other questions? Yeah. What, what is the recovery expectation up here? Staying in your home, um, if I saw that that total cost was thirteen thousand, so you're going to save eight hundred, so fifteen years to recover your installation. Cash flow positive, meaning saving back to zero, is going to be like fifteen years. But when you look at it from the standpoint of, of if you don't buy the solar, you got to buy power from Duke or Central, and what that's going to cost you, and where is if you do that, I can show you on a cash flow. Comparative cost analysis of solar energy and grid cost energy, depending upon the utility and the complexity of the installation, it's anywhere from 8 to 10, maybe 11 years. Duke folks, it's more like 8 to 9 years. Others, it's closer to 10. But again, it's all about sizing properly so you get the best value out of it. If I'm way oversized it, you're spending all this money, then all of a sudden your payoff. I look at your monthly electrical usage. Okay. And then what do you do? And then I look at your house and I figure out what can fit. Shading, factor in weather, and the strength of the panels, and the degradation rate, and all that. And put it through an algorithm and it'll show me what it's going to do compared to with what your house is. Now, you are a different challenge than most others because, because of the amount of credit they're giving you for the energy. So, again, I have to look a little bit harder at yours to get more in depth conversation about you than I do with a regular. But, but overall, uh, if, if I went solar, would I not expect to supply the majority of my energy by solar? I mean, That's why I was asking, how do you do? Like, do you look at my peak and valley and take my lowest and only? I supply the, energy at my lowest level? Yes, because they're not writing you a check. For, if I built the system, I could do, I could wipe out your bill completely, but it may cost you more than it's really, it may not be the best value for you. <coughs> it's only something that you can decide, by the way. I can't tell you that. Right. But, so, but like, so I mean, everybody sense? has peaks and valleys in their use of summer months. Right. There's way high. Fall and spring is real low. We you got electric heat. Your winter heat, so you've got to, this graph goes like this. If I build that system to wipe out your bill in the summer and winter, that means there's valleys where I'm over generating with a lot of energy and you're not getting any value for that. So you spent money on equipment, but you're not getting the full value of that energy production. Uh, so so, so, what is so your, I'll end up making it smaller so you're getting the best value, right. the best bang for your buck. So overall, though, Expect a certain percentage of yeah, and this and is going to make, this may frustrate rate? you, but my answer is going to be anywhere between 20 and 70 percent because people's usage habits are completely different and their houses are facing different directions, so it's hard to tell you 
I can't tell everybody in here, oh yeah, I'm covering 70% of your use, that's a lie. I don't know that. I can't, I can't tell but you that until I come out of it. Do you think it's worth it to somebody that only covered 30 or 70%? If that's that's what I want to hear. Yes, so yes, I, yeah, I believe wholeheartedly. I don't care if it's 10%, I believe wholeheartedly. Because for that 10% of your bill, for that 30% of your bill is the cheapest energy you will buy, period. So if our one if, a cost pay for it over and over. Right. I mean, it's kind of like the analogy, if you were standing out in the cold and it was snowing and you had very little clothes, maybe I gave you a hat and you go, well, Tim, that doesn't keep me completely warm, but it keep you somewhat warm, right? It can help. So it's kind of that thing. And, and you're gaining that 10% to so you sell over, over and over and over and over and over. So and the value of that 10% goes up every time they raise your electricity. And when you do the assessments, do you, you bring a range of here, here here's yeah. kind of what we can do for your property so that you can make a better Everybody's decision. Everybody's a little I bit different, this I, I try to put my best foot forward. This is what I think is a great idea, but um, it's a starting point in the conversation. And right? could, because I could go, hey, here's a system and it's $18,000 and the car goes, I'm not spending eighteen thousand dollars. I don't have eighteen thousand dollars. What is your budget? Let me show you what I can do to fit your budget. Or, gee, that doesn't provide enough energy. I want more. Fine. Let me show you where else you could put panels. You know, I try to pick the best spot, get the best bang for your buck. There may be a west-facing roof that will still produce energy, but it won't produce as much energy as that south-facing. So, you, you know, here's where you start. Here's where you may end. Sorry, I can't give you a guarantee. That's okay. I, I want to just talk to you after the box. That's fine. Okay, well, maybe now's a good time to uh, break up. And uh, if you'd like to sign up uh, for an assessment tonight, you can uh, go to one of the computers in the back. Um, I'm going to bring this computer back there, too. Uh, if you would like to uh, talk to David or uh, Sally or I, can have a look at your roof and uh, see if it's a We're good all, match for solar. Uh, and if you have any other questions, we'll be around to answer those questions. Thanks a lot, everyone, for coming out.